Today's May 30th. It's the second to last day of regular legislative session in Springfield. We are in the state capitol right now, and we just showed you the rotunda, which is normally full of activists, legislators, lobbyists, people visiting. It's very quiet today. All the action is on either side of me right now, the state house and the state senate, where budget bills have just been released from their closed door negotiations. They're in the Senate today for negotiations. They're expected to be in the House tomorrow. We're gonna talk to a few state legislators to see what's going on with these bills and to give you a look behind the scenes on what goes on in the process. All eyes are on the budget right now because a year ago at this time, regular session ended and there was no budget. In July, 15 legislative Republicans joined Democrats to pass the largest tax increase in state history. So give us the look behind the scenes. What's going on? What's the process right now? What is your leadership telling you? Well, there's been a budget process that's been going on for several weeks now, where each caucus, so Republicans and Democrats in both the House and the Senate, sent budgeteers to meetings. And the leaders themselves have been meeting to sort of work out a budget. This has nothing to do with, with what has been the ordinary process here in Springfield right. with setting what is the amount of revenue, yeah. a revenue estimate, and working through the appropriations committees. Mm -hmm. Really, none of that has occurred. It's all been the negotiations among the budgeteers and the leaders behind the scenes. Okay, and so you have you, Two days out from the end of session, have you seen a budget yet? Have no, you I haven't seen a budget. I've heard some very limited reports that budget discussions are continuing. The difference between the Republicans and the Democrats is narrowing, and we think we can have a budget by the end of session. This is what I know. Now, what? because last year, in July, 15 legislative Republicans voted with Democrats to pass the tax hike. What's, what instruction are you, are you getting instruction from leadership? What are they asking you to do? Um, leadership is asking us to trust the process, to stand by and um, be ready to vote on what comes out of these behind the scenes negotiations. It's been a fairly small group of people who have been working on this. And partly it's because they want to, uh, they don't want outside who groups. Who are the people who are, who are in that room? Do you know? Um, well, I think our leader, Jim Durkin, is, is involved. And there's other reps like, like uh, Representative Tom Demmer from Dixon and Representative Petty Bellock, um, Representative Dan Brady. So, you know, different members have different areas of expertise. And so they've been involved. So they're negotiating it. And then, so, and so you haven't ha seen the bills yet? No, but that's typical. <laughs> I'm the, the appropriations committee that I was on for my first six years, we'd have the different agency heads yeah. come in, testify what were the needs, right. what were the priorities, what were the budget requests right. for their specific agencies. Yeah. But then, in, you know, so those meetings would start in February, and continue through March and April, first part of May, right. and then all of a sudden <laughs> we'd go silent and, uh, and then we'd get a budget with two hours to look at it before voting on it. You're gonna see a lot coming out of the budget. If we get the deal cut, then you're gonna see it, uh, you know, folks will say, oh, well, that, you know, that's nice. And some, some will say it's wonderful. With $6 billion in new revenue, uh, we should be able to meet our, all of our expenses and, and more than that. Um, and again, I hope that we will. What, have you seen the, you're in leadership, have you seen the budget? Do you know what's in it? Well, as I, I mean, I have, I have the broad framework. Uh, as I understand it, there may have been a, I think a budget bill dropped minutes ago. Uh, we're on the floor in the House. The Senate is actually driving the bus. That's rare. Normally the House will do it. But, you know, it, it, our Constitution is not like the federal Constitution where certain things have to originate in the House and move to the, uh, the U.S. Senate. Uh, so the Senate can originate it. Uh, we in the House are just, uh, you know, we, we put off a lot of our business to the end of the term. Uh, and so, of course, we run all the very controversial bills today, tomorrow, and that's right, that. two days left. Right. I mean, right at the end, it's... Um, yeah, procrastination is kind of the name of the game yeah. in the Illinois House. And, and, and to some extent, it's Madigan's way yeah. of controlling everybody right. because you just you do very little or they kind of run us around committee to committee looking at bills that right. uh, may or may not have merit. Uh, you know, they kind of want to wear you down 
And so then uh, by the end, you don't necessarily have the strength or the energy to put up a fight. And so our, our job really in the minority is, is as much energy management, kind of bucking up your colleagues, making sure everybody's focused, everybody stays you know, in tune all the way through. Because these days, we may come in a session at eight or nine or 10 in the morning, and we may go to midnight. And there are no breaks, there's no lunch break, there's no dinner break, you just go. The difficulty we've got on the Republican side is we can get on that floor and we can yell and shout and, and the, the people of the state don't necessarily hear it. Uh, really the place where you hear a lot of these, a lot of these ideas and, and, and statements I mean, is down the road in the campaign. Yeah, but I mean, very few, and, and, and you're a fiscal, and you are reliably right. fiscally conservative, socially conservative. I try to, yeah. but, but very few, I mean, very few Republicans have pushed for um, a redetermination of Medicaid rolls or um, a rollback of Obamacare or a, a significant pension reform. Governor Rauner really hasn't done it. Well, and that's, uh, I've got to tell you, on the pension issue particularly, we are acting like a body. So when I came into office in 2014, I won an election then, I was saying pension reform, pension reform, pension reform. We get here and realize the Democrats have locked down all of the pension reform. You saw in the last primary, Dan Biss had to apologize for trying to do very mild pension reform in 2013. He had to apologize and take it back and beg on his knees, uh, please forgive me. So that's where the, the, the group is, but everyone knows the numbers. And the Democrats, they look, they're acting like people that will never pay the debt. The numbers are inescapable. You can't argue with, I mean, is it that the GOP has lost it, the will to fight? I see, I, I wouldn't necessarily put it that way. What I would say is this, I, I would say that the Democrats have decided we are going down a path to state bankruptcy. They're going, well, you know what, either I'll be retired or down the road, the, the prices will get so bad, the federal government will allow us to go bankrupt and the pensioners will be left with pennies. It'll not be on them and they will get, I mean, the pensioners will get pennies. I just think no one wants to go into the summer without a budget. It's a campaign year. I don't think anybody gains by um, not having a budget in a campaign year. I think the Republican leadership as well as the Democrat leadership are coming from that place. Um, it is assumed that this budget will include all the money from the, the tax increase is all included in this budget. There haven't been um, you know, any efforts to you know, not spend that money. If you're a sideline observer, the reason why there aren't there don't seem to be as many fights is because the state is taking in more revenue from that income tax increase. So I'm not saying that it's right or good. You know, I would advocate for a budget that would be significantly smaller, that starts to roll back that, that tax increase. But once the, um, the you know, every entity that's cl that, that is spending that money, whether it's a public or a non-for-profit group that has a state grant or state funding in some way, once they start, once they get accustomed to that amount of money, it's very difficult to, to cut off But shouldn't that, that be what the GOP is yes, fighting for us to roll that? Be, so yeah. is, has the GOP lost its, you know, lost, is there any fight left in the GOP? Or are we, should it, we be challenging the Democratic majority on these issues? Well, I can't, I can't speak for all GOP members. I can, I can say that I continue to fight for my district and for what I think like, the... You know, from in the party in general, do you feel like there is a, a desire to... I know you do, but is there a desire to bring that fight to, um, to the leaders in Springfield, to the Democrat majority? I think a lot of members are thinking about the election year, the fact that we're in an election year, that they want a budget. They just want a budget and thinking that the average observer is not as interested in the fights. They're just, you know, remember, it's, it's if the people back home were, um, you know, with torches and pitchforks, right. it, it, would, it would get more legislators' um, attention. How does the GOP plan to bring conservatives back to the party? Or do they? Are they do they think that they can get by wooing Democrats over? What's the plan for the fall? Well, I, um, I'm encouraging candidates to um, be bold <laughs> and, and talk about the actual policy solutions that we need. The, the public deserves honesty and, and truth, even if it's 
difficult to hear. You know, sometimes you have to tell a group of students, I'm sorry, we don't have the money for MAP funding, that monetary assistance program funding. We already spent the money for your professor's pension. Sorry. You know, and just making that case. Um, so no, that, that's I, what I'm I trying to do. That, and, and you, I've worked with you on campaigns, and you, but you think differently than the, you know, the leaders in the, this party. Do you have any sense of what their plan is to go into the fall? How are they planning to win nine seats in the House? How did they plan to win the governorship again to protect if they're not bringing conservatives in with votes like this? I mean, what, what is there a plan that you're aware of? I'm, I'm, I'm advocating with my colleagues uh, a vision for the, for the GOP as best I can. You know, I can't speak for all the GOP leadership or for the governor, but my understanding is that everyone feels like if we have a budget, we can fight in November. And the fight will be at the ballot box. And if Republicans can um, maintain the current numbers that we have or even gain, that we'll be in a position to fight then. What's the deal? And so, so we've got a number of different issues, a number of different moving parts here. On the issues of life and abortion, uh, in the Senate we did have a disappointing vote on the ERA. Uh, that was a pretty significant uh, uh, split on that. Uh, on the House side, we have for the most part held together. Uh, the House Republicans, you'll recall, uh, since I've been in the House, we have held together as a caucus on issues of life. Um, and, and, and here's the thing, though, we've got to give the caveat to be the majority party in Illinois, we, we allow pro-choice on abortion people into our party. That, that's, that's not a restriction. Uh, what, what I would say is most folks would agree with reasonable restrictions on abortion. They would agree we don't put taxpayer dollars to abortion. So you can be, I mean, there are plenty of pro-choice people that say, don't use my tax dollars. But when so you have really so many say, issues where well, Democrats are voting, or I'm sorry, where Republicans are voting like Democrats, or uh, on a number of issues, on a wide range, from fiscal policy to social policy to everything in between, I, what, be, what is our brand? What, what's the plan our, there? Our brand has got to stay broad conservatism. Right. The center-right coalition is still our brand. Right. Obviously, uh, with President Trump, uh, he is more popular in certain parts of the states, less popular in others, but obviously he is impacting the national conversation. Uh, but we are still a center-right party. We've got to remain uh, broadly conservative.